Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Where is Brittany? Before we get into I this, will say also, I wanted to say a few things. <laughs> um, if you haven't watched the preview for this video, you might want to press pause and click the link in the description wow, and watch that clip first. Because this in this video, I discuss a lot of personal things and some topics I may was be also triggering. Please know this was pain. recorded 18 August 2020 prior to Jaden and passing and me adopting Jada. The depression I decided it was I time to release this video and share my story. Amplified I hope my you're pain. able to gain some insight um, as to why I look at the I world the way military, I do. And lastly, this is I had my story surgeries, with my and three experiences. Three of them were on my feet. I will not argue with anyone in the <laughs> so, comment section about my life. For me, you will I'm just always be in some and type of That's pretty much pain. it. I hope you enjoy. You know, I never have a moment of. I never have painless moments. You know. I hurt my shoulder in honor guard and I'm not sure if you know exactly what honor guard is but basically you render honors you render honors to military members or veterans who have passed away and so I was carrying a casket with my group and the casket was just really heavy and it pulled something in my shoulder and so that's also you know something that I struggle with as well that's one of my trigger areas for migraines and so going through depression <laughs> sorry going through depression and always being in pain you know um, I did misuse some of my medication I have chronic insomnia I've been diagnosed with chronic insomnia I have chronic migraines I have, um, you know, my feet are constantly either throbbing, tingling. Um, I have numbness, swelling. My shoulder is not necessarily a pinched nerve, but I can't remember the medical term for it, but it's basically weight lifter shoulders. So things would, you know, my shoulder would basically lock up and then everything on my right side would either get super stiff and tight um, or you know it would kind of go numb and I would have the tingling sensation all in my right arm and so with that you know I was given all these different medications I had medications for my migraines medications for me to sleep muscle relaxers anti-inflammatories you know anything you can imagine in order to like stop pain and I was misusing you know some of my medication as far as like my sleep aids in order for me to kind of sleep away some of my days so basically you know that depression made my pain worse it made me eat more <laughs> like I became so overweight like that was the heaviest I've ever been in my life um, I got up to 178 pounds I'm five four and a half and I got up to 178 pounds and I was just so unhappy Andrew proposed to me at that weight too <laughs> because he loved me <laughs> he loved me um but yeah I struggled sorry ah. sorry about that <laughs> uh, wind brought in a lot of dust so yes basically the depression caused weight gain because I was eating a lot I was sleeping a lot and you know it I struggled with that depression you know for for a while for a long time actually and I will say that I really wasn't all clear from my depression until domino It's true. Um, excuse me. That's some of my. Eye. 
But yes, Domino helped me out of my depression. In regards to my weight loss, I'm now steady at 132 pounds. Like I've been 132 pounds since January 2020. <laughs> and um, what made me start my weight loss journey was my wedding. I knew I did not want to be big in my wedding pictures. Like for me, I want to hold my future weight gain over my children's head, over my future children's head. I want them to, <laughs> I want to point at my wedding pictures and be like, you see how fine your mama was? You the one who gave me these, you know, stretch marks on my stomach or you did this to me. Like, I want to be able to blame my future weight gain on my children, not on myself. So for me to, you know, lose this weight, I was already enrolled in college um, and going to school full time at San Francisco State. And in your tuition, you get gym access and all these classes. And so for me, I started to, to work out five to six days a week. And I'm not even joking. I was cardio kickboxing one day, Zumba the next day, spin the next day, Zumba toning the next day. Let's go and do some Pilates. Let's do yoga. And I stuck with this. Like I was going hardcore in the gym and I would post pictures, you know, to Facebook and everything to try and hold myself accountable. Um, because once this weight loss journey started, more of my friends and family would be like, you know, where's your gym picture? I don't see your class, you know, your picture of your Zumba class or, you know, something like that. So the support and encouragement from my family and friends on social media, you know, help keep me on track. And also working on Domino, <laughs> it help me continue on with my weight loss journey and help me you know maintain my weight loss so again domino has not necessarily domino didn't like start my weight loss journey but she has most definitely help in me losing weight and also maintaining the weight loss because of all of the constant work that I do on her and you know being in Domino it kind of forces you outside so yeah Domino has helped a lot with that <laughs> um I was looking back at Jaden to see what he's doing and he's just resting um yes so now <laughs> i mean we talked about the military britney gambling the depression the weight gain weight loss and now we can talk about freaking domino <laughs> <sighs> domino, domino, domino. Sorry, this isn't like the best angle lighting. Let's move it here. <sighs> Sorry, I just got tired of sitting like that. <laughs> um, so let's talk about domino, how domino came about. Um, so I started school in January 2018 and up until May 2019, sorry, I had an aunt. Up until May 2019, I lived in a house with 
for the people in San Francisco and I was paying $1,300 a month to rent a room. And during this time of me living in this house, I felt confined to my room. Like, obviously I had access to the large living room with the television and, you know, the kitchen and all this stuff, but I still felt like a visitor in somebody else's house, even though I was paying $1,300 a month. So I would only really use the common areas when people weren't home. So I would cook when nobody's home, um, watch TV in the living room when nobody's home and stuff like that. And I started to, like I enjoyed the house, the location, because it was right by Ocean Beach and I could smell, you know, I just opened my windows and I could smell the ocean and you just always had the best breeze at nighttime to go to sleep like I love the location but I just could not continue to spend $1,300 a month to rent a room I was over 30 you know renting a room in a house with four other people like yeah I just I, I couldn't so I don't even know how hashtag van life you know started but I started to look for you know, alternative living situations. And I guess typing in alternative living, <laughs> van life came up. And I started to get consumed, no lie. Like YouTube, me and YouTube was like this. I didn't watch anything other than van life videos. I fell in love with van life. And without discussing it, with my future husband <laughs> um, I determined that van life was something that I was going to do I knew it would be difficult I knew I would have to build something out myself but I just felt like doing van life would be an opportunity for me to kind of I don't know rediscover myself I don't know for me I felt when I saw van life I just saw freedom I saw the ultimate form of freedom and that was something that I felt like I never had before up until 18 you know you you listen to your parents or the people who are appointed over you as guardians And then my time in the military, I, I didn't have that freedom, you know? And so being separated and, and being in college and stuff like that, like I felt like van life would be the ultimate form of freedom for me. And I just knew in my heart that it was something that I had to do. And without you know, having this conversation to kind of explain what van life meant to me. I just went balls to the wall and kind of told Andrew like, hey, yep, I'm doing this van life thing. Um, you know, I thought about it and that's just what I'm gonna do. And when I tell you, it caused like the biggest, so Andrew and I have never had any arguments I will say, like, honestly, honestly, we've never had any arguments. We, I guess, just would talk things out, you know? I, and plus, I'm not an argue person. I'm not a person to argue. Um, I will literally look at you if you're yelling and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I will literally just kind of look at you and kind of be like, are you done? Are you finished? Because for me, I don't see a reason, a reason to yell. Maybe if it's a stranger or something, but I, I just don't see the reason for that. So when, uh, you know, <laughs> we discussed, Andrew and I, once we finally, you know, talked about van life for me, he was completely against it. For him, his concern was safety, which I can understand that, but he also just did not 
see the appeal. Like, why would someone give up all of the luxuries of living in a house to, you know, living in a vehicle? Like, he just couldn't find the, the appeal in it. And it was, you know, a big no for him. And that night when, at the time we were just talking on the phone because I was still in San Francisco at the time and he was at our home in Reno. And that night, you know, after we got off the phone, you know, he determined that like, I just, I just can't see this happening for you. And I, you know, was like, okay, I just won't do it, you know? That night I was like, yeah, okay, fine. I won't do van life, you know, whatever, forget it. I'll just, you know, continue to pay a crazy amount of rent out here. And that night I cried myself to sleep. Like I literally cried myself to sleep because for me, I felt deep down that I really needed to do this for myself. And if I didn't do it, I would end up resenting him over, I mean, it may seem small, you know, to some, but the freedom that owning a home on wheels gave me or the idea of the freedom was something that I've never had. And it took me a minute to, to really process what I really wanted or what I thought I wanted or, or what I thought, <clears throat> excuse me, van life would give me. It took me a minute to, to be able to process that and, and form it into words to relay it to Andrew so he could understand, you know, where I was coming from. And for him, and probably for you, wh whoever's watching, the idea of this freedom may not be, you know, as, as huge, as big as it is for you as it is for me. Up until I was 30 or 31, I did not have freedom. I did not have the opportunity to come and go as I please, wear my hair how I wanted to wear my hair, paint my nails how I wanted to paint my nails, dress how I wanted to dress, talk how I wanted to talk, listen to the type of music that I wanted to listen to on a daily basis or thought I wanted to listen to on a daily basis. like. This van life was literally the ultimate form of freedom for me. And I needed to get this out to Andrew. And unfortunately, when I said freedom to him, he thought it was freedom from him. And that wasn't the case. And again, I needed to think and, and, and you know, try and put myself in his shoes and try to explain it well enough for him to understand that this freedom that I was seeking via van life wasn't a freedom away from him. It was a freedom that allowed me to rediscover who I am. And I don't think that that really happened until I started to do Domino's remodel. So fast forward, <laughs> oh, I hope I'm able to like get this out properly, but fast forward to me purchasing Domino. So I won Domino 
on an online auction and I'm not giving the name out of you know the website that I did the online auction to because I personally would not recommend that to like my friends family or honestly to my worst enemy like I purchased Domino without seeing her without doing like a proper inspection you basically just filter it through options like normal wear and tear type things so that's what I did and that's how I won Domino for $3,200 so we drove the nine hours to pick her up and you know started the conversion process and during this process or even prior to I basically watch YouTube videos like I learned <laughs> everything through YouTube videos and came up with my layout through YouTube videos and you know kind of got some of the confidence to go through with the build via YouTube and I will say during the initial conversion conversion Andrew was like a clutch for me I was afraid to put holes in the walls I was afraid to you know cut anything because prior to I only used a power drill and a hammer those are the two tools that I used prior to owning Domino and everything was a full-on learning curve and so the initial build i'll try and like put some videos and stuff or pictures in so you can see what it looked like but it was plain it was functional very functional but it did not have any type of personality it was literally like um it I don't know like I don't want to say anything bad because domin you know the initial domino was functional and it looked nice it just did not look like me because it wasn't me it was it was blue which I guess deep down you know subconsciously that that could mean something but I will say it was very structured <laughs> I guess that's the best way of putting it the conversion was really structured and bland had no personality and it screamed sergeant noose on it screamed my last name it screamed who i was prior it, it, it screamed military britney it did not scream who i am now or who i was prior to and before Domino's remodel, I started to save money because I was gonna sell her. Like I was gonna sell Domino in the state she was in prior to the remodel. And I was going to buy a pickup truck and a cab over camper <laughs> because I wanted, you know, to do like, more off-roading type adventures and you know going to the mountains and stuff like that that's kind of where my mind was and I just Domino just didn't didn't feel like me really and I talked to Andrew about it and he was you know on board with that idea and I started to research for trucks and cab over campers and it may sound funny or weird but my dreams I, I don't even know how to how to like you know say this without kind of sounding weird but um, when it comes to my dreams I guess I'm a lucid dreamer um, I literally can close my eyes and set up my dreams and they will continue and that's what happened with Domino like when I purchased before I purchased Domino I would have I started having or setting up my dreams as if I was living in a vehicle but this vehicle was never a van but I could not see what it was it was spacious I could stand up in it 
but I really couldn't see what it was. I could see myself doing van life, but I couldn't see what vehicle it was until I purchased Domino. And then I could start seeing in my dreams me living in a bus. I could see it. And so when I made up my mind that I was going to sell Domino, I started setting up my dreams of me being of me owning a pickup truck and a cab over camper I would set these dreams up for almost two weeks I would set them up as if I was living this lifestyle but it never would get far these dreams would never get far and I would always end up in Domino but Domino looked different she did not look like the old Domino she just looked different she looked happier inside she looked bright she looked colorful inside and so for two weeks I tried to make these dreams happen of me living in this cab over camper and it could not happen and so I came to the realization that that wasn't meant for me that lifestyle this this idea of living in this cab over camper was not going to happen for me because I just couldn't see it and so I talked to Andrew and told him like okay this isn't happening because of you know I can't dream it so I can't it can't be because I can't dream it and I told him that I was going to remodel Domino and I sat down and prior to you know when I was younger I'm a middle child and I I was always this creative person I would sit in the corner draw paint use cray paws make my own clothes. I would put jewels and stuff on my forehead and on my eyes and stuff. Um, I sat down and I drew out how I wanted Domino. Like I started off with the kitchen. I knew how I wanted, I knew how I dreamt the kitchen to be. So I drew it out and I started to build it. I started to create it. And then those dreams just kept I don't know, the, the illustrations in those dreams just got bigger and bigger. And so it was no longer just me dreaming of the kitchen. I dreamt of, you know, how things were gonna look more to the left and how my bed was now gonna look and how my couch was gonna look. And so Domino just became, you know, what she is today. And all of this literally came from my dreams. Like I would wake up and you know have to sit up or go to the bathroom and be like okay what how did she look you know was was my doors opening this way or you know that way and if you look at some of my videos of me building things you will hear me say i don't really know how this is going to turn out i thought of it in my head and i just hope it looks or turns out how it looked in my head and that's literally you know how domino's interior became domino's interior it was all a dream <laughs> and you know i'm i, I love how it looks like I, I just love how it looks i love how it makes me feel when I walk inside of Domino, when I go to sleep, when I crank her up to drive, like I just, I get this joy, this excitement, this, this, this fire, this energy, you know? It, Domino makes me happy. Domino has become a part of me. She has become like, I guess an extension of me. When people look at Domino's interior, and I say interior because she's not painted on the outside yet, but when they look at her interior, people who just met me, they'll say, wow, Domino, like I see Domino in you. And, and I love that because I feel that all of the the negative 
that's happened, you know, from my time being in Las Vegas up until present has allowed me to rediscover who I am and allow me to create this world for myself, this world of sunshine, unicorns, and rainbows. And it was hard. Like it was a freaking journey for me to get from where I was prior to joining the military to where I am now. When I tell you my glass is always half full, like always half full. If, if something doesn't go as planned, I look at it as, well, everything happens for a reason or I'm running late for something and it's out of my control. I look at it as if me running late stopped me from getting in an accident or it stopped some negative something from coming into my life. That's how I look at things. And it was, it's been a journey to, to get back to where I am now. And I'm personally, you know, it took me, it took, took Brittany a, a lot of work to get to where I am now. And I'd be damned if I give this power over to somebody else and allow them to take away my happiness. So, I have come to the point where I only want to surround myself with people who are gonna make me happy, smile. You know, I just don't want negative things in my life and I don't allow negative things in my life. Basically, I have like a, a negative pop-up blocker like an internal negative pop-up blocker basically on and yeah I, I will just you know kick you out of my life because for so long I didn't have control over anything in my life control over you know moments or people who brought you know negative energy or negative vibes into my life I did not have control over that but now I have all the control in the world and the freedom to pick up and leave, chuck the deuces to people. I have that control, that, that freedom, and I use it. So when I say that, you know, my world is sunshine, unicorns, and rainbows, it's because it is. And I work damn hard to, to make this my reality. And I'm gonna continue working hard to keep <laughs> this being my reality and I'm happy to say that Domino has become the distraction that I needed the distraction that I craved the distraction that I wanted to help me figure out life again you know and I'm just so happy and thankful and grateful, you know, for all of the, the ups and downs that I had to go through to get to me to this point. Because it was a long road, <laughs> it really was. And I'm just happy now. Can I say that? <laughs> Like, I'm just genuinely happy, and I'm not gonna allow anyone to take that away from me. I've said a lot, and I really hope that I was able to, you know, get out who I really am, and how Domino has allowed me to rediscover who I am as a person. Domino in itself, bus life hasn't always been, you know, easy. Like this was not always, you know, my reality of being in bus life. Hell, Domino <laughs> has had her share of toes, being towed, um, being in repair mode, you know, being at the mechanics, 
and I lived in Domino without solar, without running water. So I went through, you know, some struggles and stuff, but it made me appreciate this. Like, I'll show you. It made me appreciate this so much more, you know? All right, guys, I think I was talking too much. Jay's like passed out. Um, and plus my battery's about to die. So I really hope that I was able to kind of give you guys like a brief overview. It's probably not brief actually, <laughs> but I hope I was able to kind of give you guys some insight on who I am and how I became this way. You know, with a girl living in a freaking bus in her world is like, filled with sunshine, unicorns, and rainbows. So on that note, I think I'm gonna let you guys go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's video. Um, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up if it's something you like. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.